Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to do a disassembly for you of this little guy. This right here is the Smock Knives SK23, which is a custom knife, um, but he's making a bunch of them, and um, you know they are re regularly available, and it's quite frankly a heck of a knife. So I'm going to go ahead and do the disassembly for you here, take the guy apart. Um, step number one is going to be to remove these two screws in the back, and they're using a uh, Torx uh, T8 driver here. They screw right into the back here. That's something that's always a little bit concerning just because if those screw holes strip out, you got a problem, but it's not the end of the world either. If you're careful in your disassemblies, it should never happen. That pops out the backspacer. Now we got to pop out the pivot. And next step is going to be just to take a Torx bit, and this is actually a uh, T15, which is larger than a lot of your screws. Uh, a lot of your Torx screws out there in the world. And this is free spinning, but right now I'm just able to use pressure from my finger to lock it in place. So we got no real problem there. So, got that popped out. Now, let the whole thing kind of pop itself apart here. Making care, uh, being careful to pop this button lock out through the hole in the scale. And everything else will come out itself. And there we go. This knife is not terribly dirty. I cleaned it before too long ago, but I do want to, of course, show off how to do that on the channel, so I'm going to do it again real quick. Um, and because, frankly, it's kind of a joy to disassemble, it's a simple thing that's done pretty well. So let's show you how I do this. Um, this is a little patch, a uh, little cotton fabric-y swatch thing. I'm pouring some 91% uh, rubbing alcohol onto there. Just going to go ahead and wipe down the uh, scales here. On the inside, not terribly necessary, but, you know, it's always nice. And since the majority of this knife is titanium, I don't need to worry about rust protection or anything like that. I'll just go ahead and clean out the inside there. Yeah, I got a little bit of gunk on that side. Not a big shock. Clean this portion here. Clean the back of the... So actually, I'll, I'll take a second here to show you how the compression lock works, because this makes it very straightforward to see. See, once you pop this guy on there, the compression lock, the blade is currently locked shut. It can't go any further here. There's a stop pin that goes in the middle there. But uh, with the compression lock, you press this button here, and that actually moves the compression lock completely into the scale here. And that lets the blade spin freely until the point where the uh, little detent ball on the compression lock reaches this little hole here, which locks the blade into place. And then when you press that down again, this goes back into the scale again, and then the knife can uh, spin freely out into the area. The, the, the button lock compression lock is one of those things that makes absolute sense. Like, I, I first handled it. I Frankly, I first saw a picture of it. It was like, oh, that's that's smart but I hadn't seen it previously, and so I really like it very much here. I think it's probably my favorite compression lock implementation just because, well, on your PM2 here, you kind of, you're reaching for this weird little tiny area, and I would much rather just hit a button. So, well done, Smock. That was, that was smart to do it that way. Got to go ahead and wipe off the blade here. You can see that there's a little detent ball ramp that he's filed into this, which is a nice, another little detail here. I like this knife a lot. So I actually, this isn't my knife, although it is. I, I own it right now, but, um, well, oh there, spilling booze everywhere. Putting some booze on a Q-tip to get into the uh, pivot hole here, as well as the uh, stop pin track. Make sure to clean that out. I bought this guy at a just kill a price. Um, on a forum, I got this guy for, I, I don't even remember what it was, but it was stupidly good pricing. I'm going to say like 400 bucks. I'll figure it out. But, uh, you know, I got it and I, I shot an email to a buddy of mine who said, you know, he was interested in one and, hey, you want this if I buy it? Because I'm on Smock's books here. Like, I, I've got to, I'm going to order a custom one from him. He's going to make me another one. And so I, but I wanted to review one sooner. And, you know, at that price, I couldn't really say no. So I was able to get my buddy a knife here, but I'm going to take care of it for a little while and do a review ahead of time. And this will also let me know what I like and dislike when I'm trying to customize with Smock. Um, so I'm really, really glad this, this happened. It's working out well, I think, for my buddy, and it's working out well for me. And it's just going to be good all around. 
And frankly, like I said, I like the knife a lot, and so I'm really grateful to be able to carry it for a couple of months here. And my buddy is very patient. He's got himself one hell of a collection, so there's no real concern there. Okay, um, so now everything is cleaned off here. Um, oh, clean the stop pin here. And the compression lock pin. I'm not sure if they're actually different. I think this compression lock pin's a little beefier. But we'll figure out which one is which, or we won't. I think those may be the same. Ah, well, we'll find out now, won't we? <coughs> Sorry, still getting over a cold here. So everything's clean, good to go, good to put back together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, very s number one step here is going to be to uh, go ahead and slide the pivot on through here. And I'm going to use, uh, this is the 10 weight nano oil here. Again, there are lots of different lubricants in the sea. That's actually a really depressing state of the environment, but uh, what I meant there is that there are many good lubricants out there. Use whichever one brings you the most joy. But uh, anyways, uh, putting the dolphins aside for the moment, just putting some lubricant into the uh, bearing race, and I'm going to just drop the bearing onto there. That'll have the effect both of distributing the lubricant that's on the pivot itself and of... Uh, for the lubricate in the bearings, and I'm just using the applicator here to turn the bearings a little bit, get it uniformly spread up on there. Next step is going to be to drop in this uh, this pin, and I'm going to try both of these pins to see. I believe these are the same thing, so it shouldn't matter. So I'm going to compress the compression lock there. Drop that little guy in. I really hope those are the same thing. Now, a little bit inside the blade there. Um, you don't really need to lubricate the compression lock path, I'll say. Um, like, you don't, I'm sorry, the uh, stop pin path on a knife like this. What you do want to do is to lubricate the, um, the tent ball path. So, just putting a little bit thin sheen on there. And maybe a little on the dent ball. I tend to run knives very wet. And anybody who watches my reviews will agree that's okay. That's because I like to do the disassembly and the maintenance. So I'm willing to collect a little bit of extra gunk because it just makes it even more satisfying next time I take the knife apart. Put it in there. I'm putting the bearing gauge so that it's facing the blade. And just throwing a little extra on there. No problems. We are pretty much ready to go here. This is a pretty straightforward knife to take apart. This is a complicated thing done simply, which is rare, but something I appreciate very much when I find it. I'll place the backspacer on there. I'm probably going to lose it. Well, I'm probably going to lose it in a variety of senses, but I'm probably going to lose that backspacer and have to kind of push it into a position again. <clears throat> but anyways, there we go. Next step here is going to be to uh, reinsert the uh, the pivot screw here. And I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite on this guy. Go ahead and just put a little tiny bit. I'm using the blue Loctite here, which comes in a red tube, which is stupid. The blue Loctite is what you want. If you buy red Loctite, the permanent thread locker, oh, you're going to have a bad freaking time. I'm just going to be very, very careful not to cross-thread the pivot here. I do that by backing the pivot out every so often. I'm going to tighten it down more or less fully here. There went my backspacer, but that's okay. But um, anyways, um, next step is going to be to uh, go ahead and slide the backspacer through. So what I'm going to do so I can control it is slide the backspacer through in such a way that I can see the other side here. I can kind of see through it. And that'll give me a guide for where I put my screw in. And then once I've got one of these screws in, I'm going to use a little bit more Loctite on the end here. <clears throat> there are really only three screws holding this thing together. Anyways, I'm going to drop this guy through the back spacer. There we go. And now the other screw, because the back spacer is already in, can be inserted and we'll have a much greater, a much easier time of finding 
the proper hole in the backspacer to drop it into. Just confirming that my backspacer is oriented properly. Ever since the Spyderco Rubicon disassembly, I, uh... It's something I think about, let's just put it that way. Then I'm gonna go ahead and drop the, uh... And put the knife at 90 degree angle here as I tighten the backspacers down. This knife hasn't had a problem with centering whatsoever. Smock does a good job here. However, always a good idea. And, uh... Now I'm just going to tighten the pivot the rest of the way down. These guys are pretty much locked in. Just tighten the pivot the rest of the way. Oh, wow. That's spectacular. Um, the, the pivot is now at its full tightness here, and its side uh, is free spinning. And by the way, I think I said that, but... Um, so, you know, you can always go tighter, but the pivot's as tight as I need it to be, and the action is freaking spectacular, to put it nicely. Um, I'm also going to put in the, um, actually, not to put it nicely, that's putting it negatively. This action is just out of control. It's great. Uh, but anyways, everything's tightened down. The uh, lockup is secure. There's no blade play on either direction. We are perfectly centered, as usual. Oh, I love the freaking action on this knife. Spectacular. Well done, Smarky. Wow. Okay. Knife's good to go. Um, hope this was interesting. It's a hell of a knife. It's a very, very weird knife, but it's a very weird knife that's done pretty straightforwardly. You pop it open, it's like, oh, that's how that works. No problems. So, very, very happy here. Always a pleasure. Great. Anyways, um, be on the lookout for a review of this guy very, very soon here. <laughs> Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. And if you ever get a chance, check one of these guys out. Spectacular little knife. Ah, uh, bye now.